So, greetings again. This is uh, <clears throat> part three of um, the interview conversation with uh, Pamela Voice Sims and uh, her project, Inner Landscapes Activist Community of Practice. And uh, so, we've gotten to know you. We've gotten into some really fascinating discussions about your approach and, and, and the design of your work. And uh, in the last session, we, we um, I brought up the, the, the work that the, the focus of uh, my project, Growing Democracy, being uh, that people can really talk to each other in a way in which they want to understand each other. And then with that understanding, they can start thinking together and acting together. And uh, you kind of put a, a proviso around that in terms of how, how that relates, relates to your work. And the piece that I left out in terms of my approach to it, and I, I think this is what we can, we can pick up with uh, your proviso, is that I put this all in the context of loving. If we're not really coming out of loving, we can't we can't do any of that kind of work. And loving is is, uh, and I, I mean that in a very vast way. Maybe not as vast as uh, as you use the term vast, because it, you, you've got other traditions to draw it off. But um, in one of your articles, uh, you you really make some very powerful statements and the, the one I'd like, like to start with, because I, I want to explore this whole dimension of love. Uh, we are called to reclaim, live, and become the truth of love. Deep, impersonal, all abiding love is the evolutionary spark, which is impervious to the onslaught of our culture's attempt to commercialize, trivialize, and commodify it. So, um, you want you can pick up there in terms of talking about your sense of what love is. Or, and another one that I would really like to explore with you is the evolutionary, love as the evolutionary spark. When, you, when uh, I hear the word evolutionary, I'm thinking of the whole thing that's been happening for three or four billion years on this planet, and particularly the last couple of hundred thousand with the emergence of the human race and the, the, the role that culture has played, and that um, love is one of the driving forces in that you probably have a more expansive view. Love is uh, the lowest entropy state. Michael, is it possible to stop the recording here? Can you stop the recording? Can you stop the recording? Yeah. Well, well I'll, I'll pause it. Okay. Okay. So uh, our break is over. Uh, we took care of what we had to. Uh, and before before you get started, uh, Pamela, there's two other short quotes out of that article that I think really, really uh, should brought, be brought in here. The first one is this: becoming love and staying in that alignment is the reason, the key, the purpose, and the point of existence. And then the second quote is, becoming love is radically different than acting in a loving way. That, that last one is a really uh, good place to start in making the distinction between the willpower to 
know that we should be loving and follow the golden rule and treat each other compassionately and trying to be our best selves um, and listening deeply. That is what we know to be the case. And I'm saying no, because it's all a function of brain. It's all a function of the intellect. It's why we have ethics and um, codes, of con co codes of behavior because we, see, we, we are thinking this out. What I'm talking about is something very, very different. When I talk about love, I'm talking about the lowest entropy state, which is in fact what we all are evolving toward. Excuse me, that's um, the lowest what state? Entropy, entropy, entropy. Lowest Entro entropy? entropy. Yeah. entropy meaning disintegration, fragmentation, stratification, uh, d dissolving, uh, atomization, anything that is coming apart and dissolving and, and is in pieces. That is a high entropy state. The, and emotionally, the definition of high entropy state is fear. Fear is the ultimate high entropy state. Okay. And all of the unresourceful, problematic, uh, difficult, challenging, miserable types of emotions come from some version of that high entropy state that we know as fear. Love is the antithesis. Love is the low, lowest entropy, low entropy state. It is unity. It is oneness. It is wholeness. It is integration. It is together. It is, it is, oneness is the, is is way is is um, the bottom line, and that is what when people think about the quantum field or the undifferentiated or God or light or spirit or all of those things that translate into the same unified field, the universal intelligence, that is the epitome, the perfect example of what love is okay and as i mentioned earlier on go, go ahead you want to ask something yeah a question i'm wondering why love stays in the realm of entropy my mind would think that it goes no, I mean, outside no, of entropy. It, it's no it's it, it technically it's no entropy you, you okay. see what i'm saying it's it there's there's entropy and no entropy, but we're talking about human beings evolving toward that. So low entropy is basically, okay. as long as we're in physical form, there's going to be some kind of entropy. So it's gotta be low entropy. Okay. Um, that's, that's, yeah. Um, that said, the field itself, as I mentioned earlier, we are, just as the ocean is the is universal intelligence, you, I'm using the metaphor of the ocean as universal intelligence, mm -hmm. the undifferentiated field, etc. We are that. We are the individuated unit of consciousness that is Michael with all of Michael's attainment from quadzillion embodiments over and over and over and over again. Everything you've ever learned, uh, everything you've ever become, that is your individual. That's the wave or the or the drop relative to the ocean. That's your individuated unit of consciousness and your Michael in form. The idea is to evolve toward the oneness that is Michael, the oneness that is love, because all of those, all of those dimensions of self and all of those frequencies, it's all still the data stream, same data stream, just at a different frequency. And as we evolve at, to understand more and more of who we are, the vastness of who we are. We come, we're literally becoming more of the love that we are. And it's not agape, and it's not eros, and it's not some compassionate, drippy, ooey gooey, I love you. But it is totally, that is totally human. That is a human projection of something that is so overwhelmingly amazing when you experience even a small pulling back of the veil of the kind of oneness 
when, when people have, have mystical experiences, for example, they will say, I was just so overcome with the love and the feeling of oneness and being completely one with everything. People feel this in the forest. They feel this in, in, in moments with loved ones. When, when, when human love is new and romantic, there is this feeling of something greater than ourselves. We have that momentarily. But that literally is who we are. That, that field is who we are all of the time. Christians say God is love. And they, it, it, it kind of rolls off the tongue and nobody really thinks about it because they're thinking about it in a very human, human compassion, human ooey gooey, human sentimental thing. And not realizing that when that was in this, in whether it is the Torah or the Bible or the Kabbalah or whatever it is, they're not talking about you and me in love. They're talking about oneness. They're talking about the field because we are the field just at different frequencies, as I mentioned, but it's all still us. So okay. the evolutionary story is any. It, it draws us to being the true, true self that we are, the true, trueness of love that we are. Let me, let me get, uh, throw this out to, to, to see if I'm understanding you. I, I've had several conversations with women about their experience with birthing. And each of those conversations the the thing was like like one woman was talking about I could not imagine anything as painful because it was a very difficult birthing it just was beyond anything that I I could have ever 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 conjured up as being a, a human possibility but when they put When they put the baby in my arms, I can't bring the words up. Mm -hmm. But that's the kind of moment you're talking about. Is that right? Well, that is, uh, I, I can see that when they put that baby on your chest, and, and the baby is feeling your heartbeat and you actually see it come up from your body. And you understand that to me is oneness and love. What you just described there is a difference between pain and suffering. <laughs> but you know, it, the reason I'm saying that is, is, but this is also very much a part of the practice. And in that, when that baby is rumbling down that birth canal, the pain, I, I hear your friend, the pain is such that I remember I was holding on to a poster bed and, and standing as that baby was rumbling down that, and you, you say to yourself, can this plate tectonic shift in my body withstand this pain? But if you're moving with it and not resisting it, which is how we are asked to experience life, you move with it and you breathe with it. That pain is still there, but the suffering is not there. And when that, when you hear that baby cry, then it literally is bursting into a whole new, a whole new world. But it, it's, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have, I, I see where you're, the pain and suffering, suffering is a choice. If you resist, whenever, whatever you, whenever you resist, you suffer. Right. Whenever you let yourself experience and meld with pain, you're just making friends with a natural state. But so, that, so there's that. But then there is the oneness after having carried that child for nine months and the cord is still attached and they bring that baby up and they put that baby on your chest. That's when I felt that oneness. Talk about low entropy oneness. It was just blur of universal, universal, uh, universal, intelligence right there me the baby everything everything so I would make that that, that one distinction pain and suffering I get that but um, love 
happen, happens for many women when that soggy child is right. put on your heart and you feel heart yeah. to heart. Yeah. And I, I've had my moments, even though that was not one kind of moment I'm going to have. There's, there's many ways in which it happens, and, it, and it's an amazing experience. Dads, dads who are really attuned, actually, especially when they first see that baby. I've seen, actually, I know someone in particular who literally was just transported. The, uh, the, the understanding that he was a father in that moment and seeing that child. Dads can be transported too. It's, 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 a, it's a different kind of thing. But it is like the whole curtain rises for you in terms of right. oneness as a dad too. And just yeah, sharing the moment when, when uh, uh, the three or four women that I've talked to about this. I mean, it, it wasn't matter of fact at all. It was into a you know a long conversation that it really got very intimate, and and it's like. I got that energy. The energy got into me as when they they talked about the experience. That memory energy was there, and and I was in the field of that energy. And and, and uh, why I couldn't really talk about it without breaking up here. So that's this is where your work is. This is what your work is about. Or is, or is that too it's about, abrupt a summary? It's about becoming the love that we are. It's about becoming mm -hmm. the unity that we are. If you think about any unhealthy state, whether it is mental health, emotional health, physical health, when there is fragmentation, which is the definition of high entropy fear, there is ill health. Whenever there is wholeness, unity, there, our systems are working together, our organ systems, everything is integrated, or there is, an, there is an acceptance of self and pulling together all any fragmented, as far as mental health, any fragmented sen senses of oneself, that unity, that oneness, that wholeness is, brings us closer to manifesting love. And a lot of, a lot of the practices that we do take, invite us to, over and over and over again associate into high frequency energies that bring us closer and closer to being the field to being love so there are practices that take us to joy take us to compassion <clears throat> and identifying those experiences in our lives especially since it is neurolinguistics it's about not positive thinking it is not about making affirmations it is about taking lived life experience that is encoded in the circuitry in the brain and associating into the emotional content of that lived life experience of joy, that lived life experience of freedom, of full acceptance, and just like, and a, med, and, 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 a, and a way that works just like meditation, going there. When you drift off into self-deprecating, um, and, and most people in the United, the most people in Western culture function somewhere on a spectrum from lack of self-acceptance all the way over to, to self-loathing because that, that our whole original sin where bad people is playing in the backdrop of our consciousness. It's very, very difficult for people in the West to fully accept that I am love. I am a good person. I am basically good. When the Dalai Lama or the, 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 the Eastern teachers, teachers came here, they could not wrap their brain around the degree to which the Western mind can't stand, Western people cannot stand themselves. From lack of self-acceptance, self-deprecating, the inner critic is so strong because of that whole backdrop, even if we've moved away from established religion, um, there's that backdrop of we're basically bad people, the or whole original sin concept, and we have to rein ourselves in and come up with these systems of ethics and keep ourselves in check because if, any, if I ever let myself be who I truly am, this deep shadow part of myself would start to manifest. For billions of people on the planet, that does not exist. There's an understanding that we are love. 
we are just like God's spirit, light, the undifferentiated field, the larger conscious frame, not conscious frame, universal intelligence is that unified data stream of love. We are it. We are the wave to the ocean. And then that, that wave to the ocean is in physical form. The degree to which we allow ourselves to get past the programming of Western society that says we're bad people internally is the degree to which we can open ourselves to the love and the vastness of that of that we truly are. Yeah, and there's, uh, I want to read a, a quote from one of the other articles that relates to, uh, to that. The, um, what's embedded in us from Western culture. <clears throat> and then uh, for the last part of the, our, our, our discussion, I, I, I want to go to self and identity. But the, the, the thing that, that uh, your last statement brought up for me is uh, when we choose to live examined lives, we take charge of the process. And to the, to the extent we are able, we can literally sculpt our brains in our own life experience. This is about the, the plasticity, the neuroplasticity, and, and the, 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 the capacity, which is virtually unknown, that uh, we, we can do that sculpting our brains and our own life experience to shape it to, to who we really identify ourselves as love. Sometimes uh, it absolutely... Go ahead. Oh, yeah. No, no, I just, <laughs> I say energy <laughs> outburst. Go ahead. Sometimes, sometimes it absolutely astounds me, and I'm just taken aback by the gift that we have been given uh, to, for, our, for the larger consciousness that we are the more vast version of ourselves has been given the gift of the brain that is at our service. It's literally at our service. If we know what to do with it, mm -hmm. the bulk of people just live. They're not thinking about, they make some inner in, introspection, some inner life, some reflection, but we have carte blanche we have on a silver platter everything we need to be enlightened beings <laughs> <laughs> truly to evolve towards a capacity that is absolutely limitless if we know what we're doing and as i said 5,000 years ago, the Vedas and the Upanishads said it. 2,500 years ago, the sutras said it. But now we have an entire toolkit given to us by quantum mechanics and um, neuroscience where we can literally signal what we want to have happen in the circuitry that will then manifest in our lives. The kinds of people we want to be, um, it does take knowing that it's possible. It does take knowing how, and it does take wanting it so badly that it becomes the life you live. And the, the even, um, even the last one is kind trips a lot of people up. I was going to give a, and just give you an example. And, and I was give, going to give a talk at Niagara Falls about two, two summers ago. And one of the people that was going to go knew, had read the paper that the talk was about. Um, he, he was a psychotherapist and he, we had, I was having lunch the night, the day of the, the day that I was going to give a talk in the evening. And he came and sat down next to me and he said, Pamela, I like where you're going. I get where you're going, read your paper, and I know what you're going to talk about tonight. But look, I'm a psychotherapist. I'm, I'm a fellow psychotherapist. I know that I have a wife 
and I have my life set up and I have a plan for the rest of my life. And if I walk through the door that you're asking me to walk through, it means putting my feet on a pathway that's going to take me towards self-transformation that's going to throw the whole life that I've already really carefully planned out. All the cards are going to be thrown up in the air. My wife won't know what the heck I'm doing because I, I can't, I can't, I don't know ahead of time if she's going to be able to follow me or come with me or be, accompany me on this path. It's going to mean I'm going to have to live differently. I'm going to have to think about myself differently and relate to people differently. I could not possibly have been, there was such respect I felt for that psychotherapist in that moment. He t was talking about the fears that he knew would arise in him because he'd have to stop thinking about himself a certain way. He'd have to face his face. He have to face um, the fact that he was a vast person and take responsibility for that in the world. And he just wasn't up for it. And he said, and, "But the respect I have for him because he saw it. He knew it. He looked at it, and he said, "Nope, not this life." I can't do that. So even if you know intellectually about all of the all of these possibilities, that's one thing. A lot of people say, "Oh, that's really really interesting," and they understand it intellectually, and then they put it on the shelf and they go about and live, go go about and live their lives. Some people will learn about the tools and be interested in that, and they'll dabble, and then they put that back on the shelf tough thing is to commit to how it's going to transform who you are and really 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 roll with that but that but once you get a taste of that michael once that curtain is 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 going up and you live in into the the joy of that and being able to see people in a whole other way for the wholeness they are, whether they see their wholeness or not. And that's love in a whole other way. It's, um, it's, it's, it's not just taking people where they are or understanding them. It's almost kind of appreciating how they're dealing with the circumstances they're dealing with, whether they're really dealing or not dealing or having the courage, but it's, it's being able to step back and appreciate people that way. Once you get a taste of that, everything else pales in comparison, but you have to actually walk through that door and at least start to, to experience that, to be really jazzed by that, to want more of that. And a lot of people just are not there and that's to be respected too. Like that psychotherapist, mm -hmm. I totally got it, yeah. you know? That, that example is, uh, hits very close to me because uh, very, very briefly, I was on a transformative path in a very murky, blurry way. And then I got married. The woman had two children. And that became my life. And then she divorced me. And someone asked me about four or five months after that the experience, well, actually quite a little further down the road. I don't think I was there for it. <laughs> it took a little longer. But they asked me, how are you doing with it? And this answer came up I didn't really expect. And it was, it was the most devastating experience of my life. And it was also the most liberating because now I can go back to the path I left. And I got it. I just so did that last part just completely surprised me. I don't know where it came from. Mm, I hear you. Uh, very, very briefly, uh, in, uh, uh, see if we can, <clears throat> if you can respond to very, very complex question but all of the everything you said relates very directly to all of the identity struggling that's going on at this time 
in our lifetime. Male, female, black, white, brown, nationalism, uh, all of the polarization. And it all is around identity. And the noise is enormous. And so your, your notion of self, if you can just two or three minutes, <laughs> oh, <laughs> or, right, or right. four or five, <laughs> just bring your notion of self to those, those specific struggles. It, you're, you've really come full circle to where we started in the conversation because right. you asked me to identify myself as all of those things. Uh, sex, gen gender, race, all, all, of the, all of those things. And I said, and I, I mentioned that um, love is, we are, I'm gonna, give you, I'm gonna give you some metaphors, how's that? Yeah. Michael sitting there is a stream of light, your life stream, your, that, that is Michael. The physical Michael, your consciousness, et cetera, that is, you are a data stream and you are in this body. If, I, if you just see a column of light and then your fact that you're male is one lampshade that comes down over that column of light that is really Michael as love, the data stream. And then another lampshade comes down, that's Michael the dad. Here's another one, Michael the partner, Michael the geo co-op guy, Michael the writer, Michael the brother, my, 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 Michael White guy, Michael with a cer certain uh, socioeconomic status. All of those are what the uh, Jung would have called personas, uh, Eckhart Tolle would call, call egoic constructs. They are points of reference, dad, father, author, et cetera, et cetera, all of those things. It's not Michael. And the degree to which you or anybody else is all embattled about all of those things, whether it is race, nationality, ethnicity, um, socioeconomic status, the stratification by uh, educational level, is a degree to which we are missing the point totally. We those are ways in which we very legitimately relate to the world. They are a function of the training and the prisms of our prism that is our mind. And I relate to you as Michael because you're Geo and you know you're Geo and you're a friend, et cetera, et cetera. But if I continue to relate to you as Michael as white male geo writer, author, dad, etc., I'm not relating to you. I'm relating to the energetic stream of light that is Michael. And that is the lugubrious a uh, sheath of opaque polarization that is has people in its grips in society, in this country, in the world. We are so, we're limiting ourselves so much to the brain's focus on the world of form, forgetting who we truly are, that we're sucked down the vortex, the rabbit hole of only seeing that. And resisting, and 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 resisting anything that has to do, or just basically not seeing our true selves, our true reality, or or really letting the light that is Michael shine through your your work as a writer. The light that is Michael shine through your relationship as dad, or your relationship to Geo Coop or your relationship to Ghana's community. The, all of those sheaths, those lampshades, should be transparent or translucent. So the light that is you shines through those very real constructs that allow, allow, allow you to relate to the world. You get tripped up when you completely fragment into all those polarized, segmented parts of yourself and you start worrying about being a white male or being of a certain class or being oppressed in this way. Basically, at that point, 
the, the lampshade that's over the light, which is supposed to be a point of reference through which the light shines, is opaque. And the true self can't get through, which is why we are so conflicted and so conflicted and mentally and emotionally disturbed by the degree of polarization, because we know inside there is so much more to us than being black, white, poor, rich, educated, uneducated, dad, father, all, you know, if your mind is focused there, you're in serious danger. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, cause that is, that is high entropy. It's high entropy. It's based on fear, 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 fear. And we are to evolve. We are to become love, low entropy, unity, which is the light we are coming through those constructs. And I think that um, pretty much sums up where we are in the sense that, that we're in deep trouble. <laughs> Pamela, it was we great. We don't have to be. We do not have to be. We, it's simply a matter of where you focus your attention with intent and purpose. We do not have to be in trouble at all. Right. But then that's, that's the work, is, is how to maintain and sustain that, yes. that attention. Oh, it's yes. been wonderful talking with you. And uh, you. we could do three or four more hours here, but uh, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty done for the, for the time being. Uh, thank you very, very much. And um, I really, really appreciate the moment that you stumbled into Goddess three or four or five years ago. Yes. I mean, we've had this connection. And um, this is uh, this uh, interview and, and being able to put it out is, uh, it, for me, it's like a, a completion of a certain aspect of our relationship. So. Good. Well, I, I'm so totally appreciative of you, and it, it really was providential. The two of us connecting, it has had a geo co-op thing. It has been, it, it, it's just a Ghana's thing. It has been providential in so many ways. The universe put us together, Michael. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Be well. So. This will be up on GEO in, uh, in, in a few days, a, few, a week or two, or something like that. And uh, I hope you all enjoy it. And uh, information about Pamela's uh, website and, and other ways to connect with her. Thank you. Good night.